Welcome back. I'm Michael Bull, and this is America's Commercial Real Estate Show. This segment's brought to you by Valuate Online Investment Analysis Program. Visit GetValuate.com. My guest is George Ratu. He's Director in Quantitative and Commercial Re Research at the National Association of Realtors, and he's joining us on Skype. And, George, I think one of the things that people are – maybe excited about and maybe they're afraid <laughs> of our new president uh donald trump and a lot of the things that he is say he's going to do with uh you know you have tax reform uh and and i think when you talk about tax reform to start off with um you know that could impact uh, uh business in a big way and therefore commercial real estate absolutely uh, you're quite right and in fact not only do we have uh, a new president but I, I remember some of the folks were surprised back in November to realize that they woke up to a whole new Congress, mm -hmm. um, which I think is significant because obviously we have a Republican controlled Congress. And last time we, we had a one party in 2008, uh, first time President Obama was um, elected and we had democratic control of both chambers of uh, Congress. So obviously the expectation um, uh, is that the White House would be able to much more easily work with the existing Congress to impact legislation as well as their uh, regulatory environment. And so at least from the uh, the stated goals of the administration, we are expecting uh, a lessening in the regulatory burden. We're expecting uh, tax reform in ways that um, in a sense are, are trying to be more pro-business. Uh, to also lessen the taxation bur burden on the corporate side. Um, so far, at least this year, we had was to uh, modify the Affordable Care Act. In fact, initially, we, the, the, the Republican Party was, was talking about repealing it. Then they tried to modify it. That didn't really go anywhere. So uh, with all the other issues currently on the table, uh, it's obvious that uh, 2017 may not be as successful for uh, for um, the administration as initially anticipated. However, that being said, you're absolutely right. We have a tax reform blueprint, which the House Ways and Means Committee has put forward um, on, on the House side, which calls for major um, uh, impact to uh, obviously the economy through uh, restructuring of the standard deduction, taking a look at the mortgage interest deduction, looking at more um, important for commercial real estate, the section um, uh, 1031, like kind exchanges, but also introducing the idea of immediate depreciation for a lot of new buildings. So there are some interesting proposals. It remains to be seen how many of these will actually uh, turn into reality. Obviously, uh, section 1031 is a very important part of the commercial real estate um, environment right now for our members. Uh, basically close to 50% of our members rated in a survey, we, we ran of them a couple years ago, uh, the 1031 as being a, a, an important part of their practice. And I would say that uh, from discussions with them, I would say almost 80% of members are engaged in 1031 transactions. So obviously this is an issue which uh, going forward um, is likely to, to generate a lot of attention. Yeah, I, I think 1031 exchange is important to the overall economy. And you think about, you know, the realtors, but uh, all the impact of the economy around it. If When these properties change hands, if there's construction and there's attorneys and, you know, uh, there's uh, er, there's so many people involved in these transactions. I think it would be devastating. So what do you think the chances are of there being a change in 1031 that would have any significance? Well, and to your point, before I, I directly answer it, mm -hmm. we actually asked our members, whenever you are transacting a 1031 exchange and someone acquires a new property, what's the impact, particularly in terms of, of improvements? And normally our members say that we're, we're looking at 10 to 15 percent uh, spending in improvements to the acquired property. So to your point, uh, the impact is significant. In addition, this is just the real estate um, side of the 1031. 1031 actually is is used across several industries, uh, basically um, the auto industry, the agricultural uh, industry. So it obviously is much bigger than just real estate. 
So to your to your point, what is the likelihood? I know that the Congress has um, explicitly stated they'd like to see some action on tax reform um, probably by the third quarter. Given some of the uh, the uncertainty and some of what we're seeing um, in Washington, lack of building consensus, um, we might not see anything significant this year. However, the fact that there's a blueprint on the table, uh, the fact that there are active discussions going on uh, is likely to to lead to something. I mean, looking back at the last major tax reform, 1986, um, even with that, uh, there was a lot of discussion, a lot of uncertainty. For a while, it seemed that nothing was going to go anywhere. And yet the, the reform came together very quickly. Um, and, and obviously the changes have impacted the economy and, and the U.S. overall uh, for, for quite a few decades. So on NAR side, we are um, uh, very active in monitoring uh, the discussions. We are active in uh, expressing our members um, experiences to to um, uh, the Capitol Hill. In fact, this last week we had the, the, the realtors legislative meetings here in town and our members came from all over the country and met with their representatives, uh, particularly to express their uh, experiences in the markets with some of these regulations. And um, so with that in mind, while the answer is not clear, um, we are obviously staying tuned to uh, to the changes. Now, we have a lot of listeners and viewers who, who are realtors uh, and also are, are principals and are involved in uh, the real estate business. What's a, the easiest way that uh, their voice could be heard, that they could help if they believed abolishing 1031 or substantially changes it could uh, be detrimental to the economy? Well, frankly, the easiest way is to contact your, your local representative. Um, uh, and obviously, that's quite easily. They all have local offices. They all travel between Washington and their local offices. Uh, being able to, to simply contact them, write a letter, go visit them, uh, sit down and, and talk with them about um, the importance of the 1031 and some of the other uh, issues surrounding tax reform for their uh, business and obviously for their communities, just as importantly. Yeah. Well, George, there's a lot of other things that uh, uh, Trump is saying he's going to do. Repatriation, uh, you know, we're talking about infrastructure spending, uh, as you mentioned, uh, tax reform, reduced corporate and uh, personal taxes, uh, and then the regulatory changes uh, that, that kind of some of that has kind of already started. So of all the things that you're hearing that that he might do, uh, what are the most important things you think that could impact the commercial real estate industry? Well, I would say that on one hand, um, the corporate tax rate could could have a tremendous um, implication as part of, of the tax reform. Um, uh, however, the caveat there is that uh, that repatriation, while good for, for some of the largest uh, companies and ideally uh, we'd expect that to translate into capital investments here domestically, um, will likely, at least under the current blueprint, impact some of the pass-through entities and the way uh, their rates are calculated. Um, but just as importantly, I, I view um, some of the proposals on, on the table right now, um, like the immediate expenses of, of new building acquisitions, to have a potentially beneficial impact. The trouble is so much of the tax code is interrelated that I think that the, the most difficult things to account for are unintended consequences. Mm -hmm. So we have rules, we make regulations, we try to, to basically account for, for all the things we expect might happen. But as we learned in 1986, um, any change will have unintended consequences economically and, and very much for on the business side. And I think that's, that's one of the areas uh, which leaves a still a big question mark going forward. Yeah, yeah, well, that's a good point. And uh, so what do you think about Trump's nationalism, the hire America, buy America, you know, bring your funds back into America? How might that impact our economy and commercial real estate uh, moving forward? Well, in, in that sense, um, the, uh, the nationalist, nationalism is part of a broader trend. You look at Europe, you look at Brexit, you look even at the French election, which concluded just a, a few weeks ago. Um, there was a lot of momentum um, towards the, this, this inward-looking approach. Um, but I will point out that uh, both the U.S. and, and most of the, uh, the large, well-developed economies around the world are extremely interrelated and, and, and cross-linked. And I'll give you just one example. 
uh, and that is you think of what makes an American domestically produced car. And traditionally, when you said, you know, buy an American car, it meant buy a Ford, buy a Chevy, buy a Dodge. Well, nowadays, basically, you have um, cars from uh, foreign manufacturers being completely not only built, but sourced from domestic manufacturers. And I'm thinking here of Toyota has plants in Kentucky, Honda has plants in Ohio. BMW's largest plant in the world is in South Carolina. And it's, it's reached such a point where basically BMW, which traditionally imported cars into the US, set up this factory to um, supply the US market. They are so successful that they are exporting now BMWs from the South Carolina plants to overseas markets. So in that regard, when you say buy American, what exactly does that mean? Right. Because buy American just as easily can mean buy a BMW because it supports not only factory workers in South Carolina, but the entire ecosystem of suppliers in South Carolina, Tennessee, North Carolina, and the entire surrounding area, all of which have been set up in the last decade or so to basically um, uh, help the manufacturing process. And like that, we, we see examples across so many industries. Yeah. Well, I have some other questions for you, like EB5, you know, some changes there. That seems to have helped commercial real estate. There's some changes there. So if you will, uh, stay with us. We'll be right back after a short break with uh, George Ratu with NAR, and we'll ask him his opinion of what's going to happen moving forward there. Stay with us. I'm Michael Bull. This is America's Commercial Real Estate Show.